Hey what's up guys, if you are still using divs to create your page layouts then I will ask you to stop right now and start using the CSS grid for creating your layouts. Those days are gone when we used to create the layouts of our web applications using hacks like using divs and floating them, providing clear fixes after elements and lots of other difficult things to understand and implement. With CSS grids, it has now become very simple to create the web page layouts and adding elements to it. The grid items can be arranged together in a lot of different ways and we don't really need to use any third party external library like bootstrap just to create the web page layouts. Also the CSS grid layout is supported by all the latest major browsers with maybe one or two differences here and there but rest assured that you can use CSS grids without much worries. With all that said, let's now see how to get started with using the CSS grids to create our page layouts. I am Nitej and in this video I will show you the code examples for CSS grids and I will also show you how to create a very simple layout with a banner, left and right navigation panes and a footer. Alright so without further delay, let's get started. To create the CSS grid, first we need to create a container and then define it as a grid and for that I am going to use the div element and let's set the class for this div element with the name as container. So we need to define this div as the grid and for that we need to create a style element and then we need to create this class inside it. Let's create the style element in the head of this document and inside the style we need to create the class which is this container so let's just do that now to define this div element as the grid all we need to do is to set the display property and set its value as grid setting the display property as grid will tell the browser that this div is a grid container and all the children's are going to be different items for this grid now let's just add a bunch of items to this grid and for that i'm again going to use divs and inside this divs let's also provide the text for these items and this is going to be simple text like item one and then item two three four and five and so on Alright so this is how the grid is looking right now without any rows and columns. We can go ahead and then inspect this grid. You can see that new rows have automatically been added for each element which has been added to the grid container. So for each item there is a separate row and there is a single column which is housing all of these items. Now we can define rows and columns for our grid container and that can be done by using the properties grid template columns and grid template rows. So let's just first define the columns for our grid and that can be done by using the property grid template columns. We can provide the information about the grid columns by providing the space which they are going to take in the page. So for example if we are going to have three columns with 50px as width then what we can do is we can write 50px three times and this is going to add three columns to the grid like over here you can see that now instead of a single column there are now three columns and two rows have been automatically added to add the grid items if we don't want to provide the fixed width for the columns then we can use a unit which is called as fr which stands for fraction what this means is instead of providing fixed width we can provide fractional width like we can provide one fr for each column or one fraction for each column what this will do is this will divide the entire width of the page in three fractions and each column is going to take one fraction so it simply means that the page is going to be divided equally among all the three columns let's see how this will look and this is how it is looking the entire width of the page has been divided among all the three columns now if we want the first column to take up two fractions and the rest of the columns to take up one fractions then we can change the width of the first column as 2 fr and what this will do is the width of the first column is going to be twice of the width of the next two columns individually and this is how we can use the fractional unit for this example let's just keep the width of the first column as one fr we can also provide the names of the lines before and after each column so right now there are four lines the first line is this one the second line is this one separating the first and second column the third line is this one and the final line is this one so there are four lines in total and right now there are no names associated with these lines and in the absence of any names we can use normal line numbers but we have the option to provide the line names we can provide the line names in the order in which they are rendered in the browser so for example for the first line we can provide its name like this column start for the second line we can provide the name like this column line 1 for the third line we can provide the name as this column line 2 and then for the last line we can provide the name as this column end you must be thinking what naming the lines will accomplish 
Well, it serves two purposes. First, we can define areas within the grid. And secondly, we can specify the bounds of any grid item by specifying those bounds using these line names. We can define the rows of the grid in a similar way like we did for the columns. For that, we need to use the property grid template rows. And then we will have to provide the width of each row. And then optionally, we can also provide the names of each of the row lines starting from the top and going all the way to the bottom. This is what the grid looks like right now. Because we have only six items inside the grid, the last three cells of the grid are empty and no item has been placed inside them. Now let's style the items of this grid and move on to the next section of this example. The name of the class is item and now let's add this class. So this is the item class with the background color as light coral. This is going to give a background shading or background color to all the grid items which have been added. So right now all of these grid items are very close to each other without any kind of gaps between them. We can provide gaps between rows and columns of the grid items by using the properties grid column gap and grid row gap. For example, if we want to provide the gap of let's say 2px between the rows and columns, then we can add these properties to the container class and then you can see that there are now small gaps between the rows and columns and we can see these items separated from each other. So right now all of these items are being added automatically depending on the rows and columns which have been specified for this grid. What if we want an item to span across multiple columns and multiple rows? For that we need to style the item individually using the properties grid column start, grid column end and grid row start and grid row end. Let's say for this item 1 we need to do that and for that I am just going to create a new class for this item 1. Let's just call it item 1 and this is the new class. Now let's suppose that we want this item to take up the space of two columns. For that we need to provide two things. First the starting point and then the ending point. The starting point is obviously the column start which is this line, the initial line. And the ending point is the line which is on the right side of the second column which is this one. And this line has been named as column line 2. So we are going to provide this line as the ending point like over here. And because we want this column to span across a single row, what we can do is we can simply provide the starting point as row start and the ending point as row line 1 which is this one right below the first row. Let's also change the background color of this item so that we can see it separated from all the different items. And it looks like there is a typo over here, we need to name this class as item 1. Now let's save the page and see what happens. Alright, so this is the item 1 which is spanning across two columns and a single row. And you can see that the browser has automatically adjusted the rest of the items to take up the remaining number of cells which are in this grid. There is another way in which we can define the areas which the grid items are going to take up inside the CSS grid and that is to define the grid areas. For that we can use the CSS property grid template areas and I will show you how this is going to work. You can see that this grid has 3 columns and 3 rows. When we have not defined any area then this is what the grid template areas property will look like. Every single cell is going to be represented by a single dot when it is not being represented by any area. Each row is going to be represented by a single line. So because we have 3 rows I am going to add 2 more lines over here and each dot is going to represent a single column. Now let's say that we want to define the first and second cell with the area 1. What we can do is we can replace these dots with area 1. So this simply means that the first and second cell are going to belong to area 1. Let's leave the third cell as a dot. This will simply mean that this third cell is not going to be represented by any area. We can add more areas like this. Let's say we want to represent the entire second row with area 2. So for that I am just going to replace these three dots with the value area 2. Let's add two more areas. I'm going to represent the third row's first cell with the area 3 and let's represent the last cell with the area 4 value. Now we can use these areas to tell the grid items to which area they need to belong and that can be done by using the property grid area inside the grid item. For example, if we want to place item number 1 in the first area which is this one, area 1. All we need to do is to add the property grid area and then we need to provide the area value and we can comment out these four lines because now we are representing the column and row span of this grid item using the grid area property. Now let's save the code. So you can see there is no change and this is how the grid is looking right now. Let's now add classes for three more items. So these are the classes for the item 2, item 3 and item 4. 
They are being represented with different background colors so that we can see them separated from all the other items. And this is how the grid is looking right now. These are the areas which all of these different items are taking up. Next up is the horizontal and vertical alignment of the grid items inside the grid cells. The horizontal alignment can be set by using the property justify items and the vertical alignment can be set by using the property align items. These properties have several different values like start, end, center and stretch. When these properties are defined in the CSS styling for the grid container, then these properties are going to be applied to all the grid items. If you want to align any grid item individually, then we need to use these properties inside the items. In that case, the names of the properties are also going to be different. For example, if you want to horizontal align this item to in the end, then you need to use the property justify self and then use the value end. All the items are aligned horizontally and vertically in the center, but item number two has been horizontally aligned towards the right or towards the end because we have added this property justify self with the value end. So this was the basic introduction of CSS grids with this example. There are more properties and their values which can be applied for the CSS grid container and the grid items. All right, now it's time to create a basic page layout using the CSS grid. In this example, I'm going to show you how we can use the CSS grid to create a basic layout for the header, the left and right navigation panes and the footer along with the main content in the center. So first, let's just add some HTML boilerplate to this web page. Now first, let's just create the grid container with the class as layout. Let's create the containers layout class and for that I'm going to first add the style element in the head of this document. This layout class is going to have the properties like the display which is going to be grid. There are the rows and columns and there will be three rows and three columns. The center row and the center column is going to be for the main content. So we are going to use the value auto to set the width and height for the center cell which is going to be for the main content. The gap is a shorthand property which can be used for both the row and column gap and this is going to be of 5px. Alright so now it's time to add the individual items for this grid and they are going to be the header, the left navigation pane, the main content area, the right navigation and the footer. This is how these items are looking right now in the absence of any information about their row and column spans. Let's now add the grid areas for all the different items. The first row is going to be for the header so I'm going to use the entire row for that area and that area can be named as header. In the second row towards the left first we will need the left navigation pane and for that I'm going to use the area name as left nav. In the center we have the main content so I'm going to use the area name as main content. Towards the right it's the right navigation pane so let's use the name right nav. The last row is going to be entirely used for the footer so I'm going to use the area name as footer for all the three cells. Now it's time to add the classes for the grid items. First let's add the class for the header. This is the class for the header with a specific background color. This is how the grid is looking right now and we need to provide the information about the area which the header item is going to take up. That can be done by using the property grid area and now let's provide the value of the area which is header and now the header is taking up the entire space for the first row. Let's now create the class for the left navigation pane. This is the class for the left navigation pane and now let's see how this is looking right now. Alright so this is the left nav over here which is taking up a single cell on the left. This is the class for the main content which is taking up the center cell of the second row. This is the right navigation panes class and it is taking up the right cell of the second row. And finally here is the class for the footer. So this is how the entire layout is looking right now and it looks like the footer's height is too less so i guess i have made a typo over here and so right now this is 10px which is not the correct value so let's just use the value as 100px and now this is what the footer is looking right now and this is the entire layout of the page you can also create layouts for different screen sizes using the css media queries and that would be everything that this video has to offer thank you so much for watching this video if you like the video then please like it and also subscribe to the CodeFest channel for more such videos. I am Nitej and I will see you next time. Till then take care of yourselves and have a great day.